This is a short demonstration video showing you how to use Apple's Photos on an iMac. It's a really useful editing tool and it can handle RAW files, JPEGs, although most of you will be using it to edit your iPhone images. If we look at the layout, we'll see on the left, it's got all the places where the photos are. And if you use iCloud, your photos from your iPhone will come in here as well. Okay, so we'll select the first image, which is this landscape. A little yellow border goes around it. We can see the yellow heart for favorite appear. The first of the four icons is info. If we click on there, this shows us exactly where the picture was taken. It also shows us the aperture, the shutter speed, the size of the image, which phone it was taken on, and the date. Okay, so we're just gonna turn that off. Next, we have got our share, and this will send it to another phone, computer, another folder, or anywhere you want on your system. And this one on the right is rotate. Sometimes the iPhone will take a picture and appear on its side or upside down. If that happens, just turn it round. And you can do that here when you've got all of the images showing, it's much quicker. Right, we're gonna start editing this landscape picture, so let's double click. And we'll notice that another icon appears on the top right. It looks like a magic wand, it's the auto enhance. If we click on there, you can see that it applies a bit of a contrast and lightens the picture. It's just trying to give it the best look it can. Because this image is fairly balanced, it hasn't actually done that much to it. Just to show you what it has done, let's click on edit. In here, we can manually edit all of our images. We've got exposure, we've got color, we've got black and white, we can retouch. We've got levels, curves, a bit of definition, selective color, and vignette. To show you what Auto Enhance has done, you can see that two blue circles with a tick have appeared, so we know that it's affected the light and the color. I'm just gonna select that arrow there. As it drops down, we can see that we can change that image if we want ourselves to a more saturated. It's a bit too much, so let's go the other way, and it flattens it off quite a lot. I don't really like either of those, so I'm just gonna undo, which is this little arrow that's turned back on itself. That takes it back to the original state. I'm gonna select Auto again. That's the same as our Auto Enhance. Now you can see just underneath we've got options and another arrow, so click on there. And quite a few of these have this setting, and we've got more editing tools available. The first is Brilliance. This tries to keep the highlights stable and increase the shadow detail and add a bit of mid-tone contrast. It's actually quite a useful tool. So if we push it all the way up and pull it all the way down, and you can see that because these sliders are non-destructive, it's really easy just to make edits until it looks the way we want it to look. So I'm gonna leave it roughly where it was. Exposure, this will control how bright or dark the image is. That's a bit too much. I'm gonna leave that back there. Highlights, so anything that's kind of a light tone up to white, if we pull that back, we can darken our sky, and it's a bit too saturated, and we can lighten it quite a bit. I'm just gonna leave that minus 10. Shadow detail, shadow details would be the bits in the trees, so we're just gonna bring that up a bit. Brightness is very similar to exposure. And contrast, sometimes contrast is too much. If we take it down, it goes very flat. If we bring it all the way up, I mean, you can see how easy this is to use. Okay, the next is color. Click on there. Got the same thing here. We've got this slider. So if we take it all the way to the left, it makes it a black and white. Take it all the way to the right and we've got a lot of saturation. I'll just reset it and click on auto. And below again, we've got options. Click on there. You can see that you've got control over saturation. So we can make that black and white or highly saturated. Vibrance causes a bit less of a saturation and sort of affects the mid-tones really. So if you bring it up just a bit, it gives it a little bit of color without taking it too far. Finally is cast. This adds a bit of green if you go to the left and a bit of pink if you go to the right. I'm just gonna leave that where it is. Next, we've got black and white. Just click that arrow down and the same thing again. We've got this slider and we've got the options. So I'm just gonna open the options now and just scroll down so I can see everything. So if we slide this to the left, we get different types of black and white. So it's quite useful. You might not know which one you want to do, but by sliding it, you can see which you prefer. If you're not sure, auto, that actually does a pretty good job for me. And if you don't want black and white at all, you can click it off. We've got these manual controls and in here, once you get used to them, you can set the tone and the contrast areas where you like. Finally, we've got grain. So if you want something that looks a bit like old film, it's a bit too much really for me. So I'm going to bring that down. I'm just gonna keep this as a color picture, so I'm gonna undo this. There we go, and close that off. We've got a really useful tool that you don't actually have on the phone, which is Retouch. If you click on here, 
you can see that I've got a little brush and we're going to click on that and that appears. Now that brush is too large. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. What this is useful for is removing bits of the scene that you don't like. Now over here I've got a tiny figure and I don't really like them in my picture so I'm just going to brush over them. There, they've disappeared. It's as easy as that. We're going to try and remove some of this mud. Okay, that's not too bad. Just tidies our image up a little bit. And these trees here on the left. There we go, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to be quite ambitious and try to get rid of this set of trees here. Just brush all the way around and let go. Okay, it's not done the best job, so I'm going to undo that, which is Command Z. There we go, got our trees back again. If you take pictures with the flash, you'll notice that you get red eye. So if we click on there, we could adjust that and apply the brush again. I haven't got any flash and haven't got any red eyes, so I'm not going to do that. Next, we've got white balance. White balance controls the color of the image, and we've got this basic slider here. So if we push it to the right, it makes it very yellow. If we push it to the left, it makes it blue. So if you've got a sunset, this would give it a little bit more orange. If you're photographing snow or street lighting, pull it back and you can add some blue into it. Let's leave that in the middle. If we click on neutral gray, we've got skin tone, so you can adjust faces and skin. And the one at the bottom is temperature and tint. If you know your Kelvin scale, if not, it doesn't matter, you can guess. Just bring it up to the right, 10,000 is very orange. Take it down, 2,500 is very blue. If you're not sure, auto. Actually, auto hasn't done a very good job with this. For some reason, it's added pink, and I think it's because of all the green from all the grass. So I'm just going to reset that. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit of warmth in and a tiny bit of pink in, but not much. There we go. If you've used curves or levels in Photoshop, or if you know what they are, these are a really good tool for adjusting localized color and contrast. The classic curve is an S shape and that puts quite a lot of contrast into the picture. I'm going to undo that because I quite like the contrast. Levels is the same. This area here is for our black tones. This area here is for our white tones. And if we drag them in, you can see that we've added contrast. This one here is like an exposure. So if we push this to the right, it makes it darker. Push it to the left, makes it brighter. And you can see that I can darken the areas that are quite bright. And this one here is for our dark greys and the same thing. We can lighten them. Or darken them. What you notice is quite a lot of posturization appearing and this is where it breaks up quite a bit. So I'm just going to undo this. There we go. We've got definition. This will apply a little bit of mid-tone contrast and you, if you do it too much it sort of goes over a bit, gets a bit sort of um, sharp looking. So I don't like adding too much of this. Selective color is quite a useful tool. If we had red in here, we could adjust that, but we don't. What we've got is blue, yellow, and green. So we're just gonna concentrate on these middle ones. So if I select yellow, I can change the grass and make that a bit redder or a bit greener. I can also take the saturation down of the grass and bring it up, and we can lighten the grass or darken it. So let's just darken it a bit and make it a bit greener. Because it's grass, we're gonna adjust the green. Let's bring the saturation up a bit and let's make it a bit bluer. No, that's not quite worked. A little bit more yellow, that's quite nice. And just a touch darker. This range says how much of that green it's gonna change. So if we bring it all the way down, it'd be quite specific. If we take it all the way up, it'll go green, greeny blue, and a bit of greeny yellow. Finally, let's make that sky quite bright. First of all, try the cyan. Let's bring that up a bit. And we're gonna darken that down. And we're gonna make that green look in. And bluey purple. Quite like a touch of green and the saturation, bring that up. And then finally the blue, saturation up and make it a bit purpley and let's bring that down. Okay, so none of this is that natural. So I'm just gonna undo all of this. There we go. If our image was taken in low light, it was a bit noisy, we could adjust noise reduction, which would soften all the speckles that you get with noisy pictures. This was done in bright daylight, so I don't need to use that. Sharpen, if we need to adjust sharpen again, just bring it up a bit, but not too much, because if you go too far, you can see that it starts to look a bit weird. The grass has got white lines around it. Um, I'm gonna leave that down and off because I don't really need to add any. And finally, vignette. In vignette, we can darken all the corners of the image, 
But the thing with this is it looks a bit too much. So what I'm going to do is bring that radius back a bit and bring the softness up. Okay, so that's not too bad, but let's bring our strength back down again. If you click this arrow, you can turn it off and turn it on again. That vignette's just enough now. We've pulled a bit more into the trees and that looks quite good. Right, we'll click done. And we'll go back to our other images. Okay, so we click on the B, double click there, and we'll go to edit, and let's click on auto enhance. That's put quite a lot of contrast in there and brightened it, and that image looks quite good. But we can go in and just take down a few details if we want. So I'm just gonna bring the highlights down a tiny bit, and I want to add a little bit of vignette in. So I'm just gonna bring that up a bit, and I'll bring the softness up a bit, and the radius up a bit. If we wanted to lighten the edges, we can take it down, and you can see that the edges go quite bright. But I want this darker, so I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit, and that radius back. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the color of this. I just want to add a little bit of warmth into here, which is quite nice. And I also want to add some more shadow detail. That's a bit too much for me, so I'm just gonna bring that down a bit. There we go, that's pretty good. One thing you'll also have noticed, at the top we've got three settings, adjust, filters, and crop. So if we click on filters, you'll notice the filters are the same as on your iPhone. So vivid, vivid warm, vivid cool, dramatic. You've also got black and white in here. So if you don't want to play around with the black and white settings, you can use the black and white filters in here. And again, you might not want to use all of it. You can slide this back or leave it about 80%, 90%. Same with dramatic cool. It might be a bit too much for you, but I quite like dramatic cool. It gives it a bit of a vintage look. And finally, we've got crop on the right. Crop is really handy because you can isolate bits of the picture that you want. So I'm just going to bring that down. And then to move it around, click on the image itself and position where you need to. You can also change the angle if it's not very straight. We've got the option of selecting different aspect ratios, original, and you can also flip it. Okay, that's done. Let's go back and our final image. This image has already been edited on Instagram and I've brought it back in and I can't use the black and white tools because the tones have already been pulled apart. And if you look, it fails quite a lot. So let's undo that. But what I can do is use saturation to bring that down and then scroll down to levels or curves. I like using levels. So I'm just gonna bring the dark tones and the black tones in a bit. And I'll bring the white tones and the highlights in a tiny bit, but not too much. There we go, and just lighten that. I'm gonna add a vignette just to give it more impact. Softness, there we go. Okay, I quite like that now. So if you wanna export this so you can use it on a website or send to somebody, go up to File, Export, click on Export One Photo. This brings up this box and you'll notice that the photo kind is already set to JPEG. If I click on the bar, you can see there's two other options, TIFF and PNG. It's most likely you won't need them, so leave it as JPEG. Keep the quality as maximum. There are smaller sizes if you just need to send a smaller file to somebody or in an email. The color profile that most people use is sRGB. It's what's used on the internet, so leave that. And the size, I would leave this set to full size unless you need it for a specific purpose, in which case you can click on custom and select your own pixels. If you're not sure what size it needs to be, try large, medium, or small. They do reduce it quite a bit. So just try them out and see if the size suits what you need. If you've put titles, keywords, and captions, it'll include those and local information. Click on export and select a location where you better find it. And that's Apple Photos.